our third um, showcase presenter is Andres Rubens. And um, Andres has a, um, uh, a, a thesis and a thesis presentation, which I think both draws on some of the, I think, the core issues and challenges and opportunities that the, the Berlin School has addressed since, um, since the beginning and extends them uh, into uh, the world of 2018 and, and beyond. Uh, the, the challenge that he poses is, as you see, Latvia's um, uh, brand strategy, uh, but uh, he really tasked himself with conducting research and developing uh, a new narrative. Uh, for Latvia, and um, that, as I say, uh, would, would seem on its face to uh, take on some of the core uh, brand communication and, 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 and strategy issues that uh, many in the school have, have taken on from the beginning, but I think he does so in a way that really extends um, a, a specific model of, of branding, and even more importantly, he addresses multiple stakeholders uh, in a complex world uh, in, in a way that I, I think is really exemplary in terms of what, what a brand narrative can do. And so uh, it, was a, it was a treat when we uh, had a chance to, um, uh, first of all, read his thesis and then hear uh, the presentation the first time in the defense. And I think uh, you will also learn quite a bit from him today. Andres Rubens. Thank you. Thank you, David. Wow. So hi, everyone. And it's always a pleasure to be back at school. and. Uh, this is a very special day for me, of course, if it's, as it's a last official day, but I, I promised myself to be back every July for this great reconnecting event for all of us. And I encourage you, not you here, but those of you in live stream or anywhere in WhatsApp groups also do the same. I think it's worth it. All right, so regarding my thesis, it's probably one of the most egoistic theses because you will not learn too much for yourself but you will learn a lot about my little country. And maybe it's worth a shot, right? Anyway, uh, Latvia this year is celebrating 100 year anniversary. What a nice number. And this is actually one of the triggers why I, th I th this decided to, to write the thesis on Latvia as a country. Also, uh, our graduate, yes, from Australia, from Canada, but who did thesis on Australia tourism brand was a great inspiration to me as well. So Latvia celebrates, but also our neighbors, Baltic neighbors, Estonia, Lithuania celebrates 100 years. Finland celebrates 100 years. So there are a number of countries which were founded around the same time. Uh, but when it comes to country branding, when you look at Finland uh, and, and throughout last, let's say, five to seven years after Nokia died, basically, they, uh, there is um, uh, hundreds of articles on uh, Finland's school system as an amazing example to the world, to other countries. So they have set the bar in terms of education, and that's a great positioning, that's a great image for a country to have. When it comes to our neighbor, our small uh, neighbor Estonia, uh, having uh, only one million population, what an amazing brand story, right? They, they call Estonia a Europe cyber capital, they call it digital nation. Almost every country in the world has been to Estonia to understand how the fuck, how, how, the, how the hell can a country transform into a digital space so perfectly. Yeah? E-elections, e-citizenship, I mean so many things that Estonians and, and everyone from the world can experience Estonia digitally, virtually. You can start a company easily from their platform and so on. So another amazing example. Uh, at the same time, we have the country brand of Latvia. Uh, let's say we don't have a country image of Latvia, even worse. This was a half-year article in Politico, one of the global news articles, and they called us a disappearing nation, right? S a title you want to have for a country? Not really, right? I, I, I'm optimist. I think we can do better than this. So, uh, but in a way, it's somewhat true. Uh, because since Latvia joined the European Union in 2004, we have lost around 20% of population. They spend their lives in UK, in Ireland, in Norway, in, in, in other countries. They somehow don't think Latvia is a good place for them at the moment, hopefully at the moment. So Latvia and Lithuania are two countries which are losing uh, its population the most in the whole Europe, which again is a warning fact. So there is something wrong in the 
in, 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 in maybe also regarding country image to what it, when it comes to ourselves. So the question I asked, how come some countries are strong country brands, which are here, Japan, Germany, Switzerland, Norway, Canada, Sweden, and congrats all of you who, are, who can find your countries here. And even our, our neighbor Estonia is somewhere here. And when I asked the future brand, the, the company behind research, where is Latvia? So they answered politely, Latvia is not yet a brand. <laughs> Fine, I mean, we can hopefully change it, right? Because I've been working in branding for the last 20 years. I thought maybe there's something I can do as well. So um, why do you need a strong country brand? Another research for future brand shows that if you export goods or services, people are going to buy, uh, twi there's twice as much possibility they're going to buy the products from the country brand, country that has a strong image. Or they want to recommend to friends to visit country, or they're going to recommend their businesses to invest in country or do business with if the country has a strong country brand. So there's clear financial and, and, and uh, and business benefits to having a strong country brand as well. So uh, what makes a strong country brand? So there are many factors. These are some of the most critical ones. So very often we know country because we know Lego, and of course you know the Denmark from Lego, we know uh, different other brands, and that's, this is how we learn about country. So the country brand strength is connected to how many consumer brands you're known for, very much. It's good that you have expertise across multiple consumer categories. That makes the country brand even stronger. It's good to have momentum in technology, innovation, sustainability, and influential city is not enough to make a strong country brand, but it helps, and I'll come to that. All right, so this is one of the rankings, and there are several ones of uh, country brand rankings. So this is Digital Country Index, where Latvia is position 116, which is quite okay, because our uh, food, national football team is even uh, lower ranked. I think it's around 138 or something. Uh, again, congrats to, to all of you who uh, are higher. Uh, there are some other rankings which uh, I, I, I like much more because Latvia is ranked uh, in 40, 34, 41 in Global Creativity Index, Global Innovation Index, and Good Country Index, which is the index about the countries contributing the most to the world. So this, this I like a bit more. Again, small country of Estonia is in front. The good news, Lithuania is behind us. So <laughs> that, that's always good to know, right? Uh, at the same time, Iceland, and the cheers to my friend Agnar, uh, is, even, is eight times smaller than Latvia. And their country brand is even more higher, even more appreciated, stronger. And Finland, of course, is really leading the, the race in the moment, if, if I compare, kind of comparable regional and, and population size-wise countries. So, uh, the good news again, uh, when it comes to those rankings, they also, uh, the, the, if, if you deconstruct them, the most, the strongest uh, areas Latvia uh, has today is talent, creative industries, which is great, science and technologies, which is amazing, it's a future, and climate and planet. And as we don't have a large production plants, and we are uh, quite unpopulated as a country, more than 50% of it, of, of it is forest, of course we don't contribute a lot of pollution to the world. So we are pretty green. All right, so um, I, I, I did a Skype interviews with uh, Iceland and Estonia brand managers, wondering how come they have strong brands? What did they do? Two very different stories, but quite, in, quite uh, similar conclusions I could make from those two case studies. So Iceland, it started in crisis. They had the most difficult times uh, because there was a financial crisis and there was a volcano <laughs> exploding. You remember that probably which made probably a, good, a lot of new star titles, but didn't help tourism industry. So they were in a big crisis, and they decided that's the time when we sit around the table, everyone, every ministry, prime minister, president, all the industries, including fishing industry and tourism and so on. So they sat around the table, decided, let's invest, let's do a strategy, let's do a brand, let's start uh, investing in country marketing. And, and since that, uh, since last 10 years, there have been communicating a very very specific campaigns, projects, and a lot of creative advertising as well around the same brand of Inspired by Iceland. So they try to be inspiring to businesses, to visitors, and I think they do it pretty well. Uh, Estonia didn't start from the crisis. They started from success stories. The Skype, the amazing uh, brand of Skype, which we all know, which is not always perfect, but 
we all know, uh, they sold Skype and they got a lot of money to invest in new startups, in new startups, in digital uh, space and, and technologies and became one of the best known countries for uh, digital citizenship and government and so on. And today they have four unicorns. This small country of one million already, already have four unicorns uh, uh, performing and operating. So again, amazing uh, story, uh, amazing results. There are more than 20,000 e-residents from 140 countries which have joined uh, this e-Estonia platform. All right, so what can we learn from those two countries? So first of all, one umbrella country brand helps. So they, one clear kind of vision or positioning always helps. I know from, from the strategy as well. Clear marketing priorities set. So they sat around the table and decided this year we're going to concentrate in these one, two, three priorities. We don't invest in everywhere because the budgets are limited, even, even there. And the third very important issue, they really co collaborate between public and private, and they actually co-fund the marketing from both sides. In Iceland, there is a marketing tax, so every company pays uh, marketing tax so that there is enough funding so Iceland can market itself in the world in those important areas. Estonia, they, they gather funds from those private companies. So, that, and, and that's, uh, that's, that's why it works. So, coming back to Latvia, we have a very difficult branding history and also the country history itself. And as I said, it was founded uh, 100 years ago, but we enjoyed our freedom only for 20 years. Uh, Yes, it's somewhere here, if you still wonder where is Latvia, and that's, that's okay. I mean, whenever we won Olympic, model, the, uh, Olympic medal, there is a lot of searches on Google, where is Latvia, and is it a country, or something like this. So Latvia is here, uh, nicely sitting on the Baltic Sea in the Northern Europe. Uh, so we enjoyed our freedom for 20 years, and then we uh, lost it, because, as you probably heard, there was a Soviet Union around. Uh, around for 50 years. So we, the, as a country, we were occupied. So of course there was no kind of independence, no freedom, no country branding in, 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 a, in a way we understand it today. But the good news, we had this peaceful revolution in the uh, in, uh, 1980s, I, and I was, I was uh, it's not me in a picture, but my family was also participating in, in what we call the Baltic Way, where two million Baltic people were standing from Vilnius to Riga to Tallinn in one line and, 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 uh, and may, made finally the world to see that we are, you know, we are united and we are ready to be free again. So, and the magic happened and we regained our independence in 1990. So for the last 28 years, we are free country again. So since that, every, everything Latvia wanted was to basically integrate in every Western structure possible, not to, you know, uh, uh, see the history repeating. So we were very happy to, jo to join the European Union, NATO, OECD, you name it. So basically there's every organization in the world exists, Latvia is part of it. To make sure, you know, we have a solid friends for life, hopefully. Uh, and thanks to Canada who supports our NATO forces uh, 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 a lot today. So, but afterwards, I mean, there was no real vision. I mean, we, because we, we, we did it. I mean, and so what's next? And nobody could answer that question. What's next? I mean, we, we are there, so where to go now? And of course, there was a lot of advertising on, on we are advertising all kind of great, weird things Latvia has, like blue cows, like flying people, like, you know, singing in a cappella choirs, 50,000 people together, which is quite a weird thing to do, but we still do it once in five years in song festival. And so we did a lot of uh, good, uh, good, good, good slogans, good logos, but I mean, every three, three years they change and there was no real strategy behind it. So the land that things, uh, uh, Latvia best enjoyed slowly, which is very true because a lot of roads are not in very good shape yet. Um, and Magnetic Latvia, which is the brand we currently have it, have it but nobody can really answer what, what does it mean for us and how, how, like, how it changes what we do tomorrow from what we do today. Anyway, but it looks good and it's, it's kind of nice to have it, at least something. But as Julian Stubbs said, uh, that if you stand for too many things, it, it becomes wallpaper. Yeah? So, and consistency in branding is a key. Just like having this strong image and consistency, two very important factors. If you miss one, you are where we are, right? And you don't want to be there, probably. 
So uh, there was a one, the first and last time Latvia actually did the proper marketing, country brand marketing strategy was 10 years ago. So Latvia Institute commissioned world's one of the best known country brand experts, Simon Anholtz. And so we thought now we are gonna win everyone. We have the best, you know, team coach in the world. So, but Anhold, he spent a half year uh, researching and interviewing and, uh, and then doing round tables and workshops and, and at, at the end of the research he said, uh, Latvia is just not yet ready to brand. I mean, you, are, you, have, you have so low, so, uh, so low the self-esteem is so low, you don't believe yourself, you don't have, you know, a, a real strength to, to share with the world. So let's just brand Riga instead, the capital city of Riga, which is a great city and you're all invited, of course. Uh, but and it also contains half of Latvia, so it's kind of interesting case as well that the capital owns the, the half of population basically. So and and Latvia is just a nice garden around Riga, which which was quite honest and very relevant conclusion then. But I challenge Simon, and I, I haven't talked to him yet, but I, I hope I will. I, I think Latvia has made a lot of progress during the last ten years, and we deserve country brand strategy as well. So. Uh, is Latvia ready now? Was the question I asked myself. And there is a lot of interesting things going on in Latvia. So we are number one fastest growing economy in European Union. We have the, the, the best optic, the fiber optic coverage in Europe. So the internet, even in, in small villages, 4G, in the middle of forest, you can have uh, access to internet. And it works. And we are ready to 5G uh, in, in, in all the big cities already. So, and, and many other things. We are very green. We are uh, safe in terms of the, the, the NATO budget, the top five country who has the enough, this, this percentage from GDP. And also we have got some great ambassadors, right? If you, if you follow NBA or basketball or you are from New York, you might uh, have heard of our unicorn Porzingis, who is the leader behind New York Knicks team. And if you follow tennis, uh, uh, last year the Grand Slam in the French Open was won by Latvian Ostapenko. Again, amazing achievement, amazing ambassador. I, I hope she does well now in the US Open. Uh, if you follow ice hockey, our team is among world's top 10 teams. If you follow opera or culture or arts, you might know that uh, I see it here, I don't see it now. Elian Garanj and many other stars are among top performers in Metropolitan Opera and other very prestigious uh, houses and performance halls. So again, the Song Festival, the amazing venue where 50,000 people song, uh, sing and dance together. And they, we have some ambassadors here in Berlin School and I'm the third Latvian here and there's Edgar studying now and I have two guys before me who actively promoted the Berlin School, so thanks to them again. Uh, so we have got some good coverage, I think. Uh, and as, as, we, as we have the, uh, the 100 years anniversary, I think it was a good idea to ask this question. What brand strategy or what, what brand narrative, probably it's more correct as, as Michael um, pointed out yesterday, what brand narrative would uh, be the one we should tell to the, to the world so that it's not 100 different stories that never meet each other, but what could be this one umbrella brand story, brand narrative that we could share? I did some uh, literature review, of course, uh, and I, I'm not going to cover uh, all of it. J just say that basically one of the most interesting researches was done by Georgi Zondi, who, who did a, a thorough research on Eastern Europe and, 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 and also Baltic countries, which are these transition countries. So, and, and, and he made a lot of conclusions which are still very, I mean, uh, live today, at least for Latvia. I mean, we still lack this strategic approach when it comes to uh, country branding. And one quote I enjoyed a lot was about that traditional countries have little confidence, often view themselves in negative, pessimistic way, especially at the beginning of transition. So branding can strengthen that we feeling and unite the country's people. So I thought it's not just important that we attract new people to come to Latvia and do some business with us, but actually it's, it's also critical to boost the self-confidence self of our own uh, population. So I read some books, and then, of course, reading books always helps uh, to understand that there are some smart people around you who have, who, who have had very, very uh, great, uh, spent great time thinking on different models and, and, and mistakes and challenges. And, uh, and, and one of the books, the, and, and many actually others also, had this theme that very often 
countries make mistake thinking that promotion of country is the most important thing. And of course it's not, because the, the one of the, uh, it's one of the least important tasks. Actually, what country can offer, what country can contribute to other world is the most important. And only then comes the stories, the logos, the slogans and campaigns. And that country brand the strategy is all about is ongoing process on researching place image, segmenting, targeting specific uh, demographic audiences, positioning the place benefits and communicating them. So it's an ongoing process and that's exactly what Estonia and, and Iceland is doing once a year. All the stakeholders sit around the table and they decide, okay, last year we did great here, this year we focus on this. Very clear, who are we talking to, what is the message and how do we get it there. One of the most popular models used in country branding is, central, is, is by Bloom Consulting, the place branding model, but as it kind of fo focuses on itself, I, I thought I wanna, I wanna build a brand which has a clear purpose, which is very open to, which can contribute to, to, to other world, not just sharing the idea that how, how cool I am. So, and coming back to Simon Anhalt, my friend, uh, which I haven't met yet, but, but, but he last, last year he started the Good Country Index, uh, so which is the index uh, I like a lot because it really tells which country is contrib contributing to the other world, uh, to, to, to the world and which areas. And, 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 what, and how he defines good country is the country that contributes to the greater good of humanity, a country that serves the interests of its own people but without harming and preferably by advancing the interests of people in other countries too. So it's just like in a, in a I mean, a commercial world, and we know, all know those examples of those that uh, not just produces soap, it uh, really works on building confidence of women and talking about natural beauty, and, each, and, and it is much more stronger brand than it, uh, than it was before it started. Tom's Shoes, I mean, again, giving something, the giving people need, in, in every time you purchase something from them. What a great business kind of formula to have. Or Volvo, who, just, who not just builds safe cars, but actually contributes to the safety of, of road traffic as such, introducing different new innovative products and, and ideas. Or Airbnb, who talks about inclusivity. And, and, and of course, I couldn't, couldn't, uh, men, uh, couldn't skip the Oreo cookie, which is also very, um, which is contributing in, in their own way, in, in uh, supporting minorities in different other areas. So I thought I would use the BDB brand foundation model, which has not idea, but the purpose in the middle. So I thought, of course, I know this model because I've used it in DDB working with it, but also I think it's more, more interesting to see how country can work with the model, which I have never done before. So the four main factors in approach is the strengths. What is our strengths as a country? Uh, who are my key audiences? What is their key mindset? The experience, so why is it a good place to be, to work, to study, and do anything you are supposed to do? And the culture, what trends influence the country reputation? What tensions, problems could we solve to become uh, more respected as a country? So very important questions bef uh, to answer before you get to the purpose that kind of links those areas together. So what did I do? I interviewed 30 people, which was, uh, of course, an amazing uh, experience because I met people from art to science, from academics to business, from locals to foreigners who happened to live in Latvia uh, for different reasons. Uh, so 30 very interesting talks and interviews. So I will shortly show some of conclusions because I, I have uh, limited time here today, but I mean, if I would do a little handbook from those, what, how they th see Latvia, I think we already have a good base for boosting confidence because they were, most of them were very, very strongly believed that Latvia has a, a great uh, potential and that we really needs to be branded. So regarding strengths, so there were many, of course, different answers, but there was one theme which was kind of re repeating itself all the time, the freedom, and of course the whole fact that we managed to gain the independence, regain the independence, and now kind of uh, finding ourselves in a very free environment where e everything is possible is, is amazing, as uh, Eva Zibart, uh, one of our architects, uh, shared. And uh, Morten Hansen, the, the Danish economist who, who came to Latvia 20 years ago and never went back uh, because he, he finds uh, Latvia is an amazing place to be. So, and he also says there are only two handfuls of countries in the world that has this level of in integration. Yeah? So freedom, integration, strong culture already mentioned, 
and globally recognized talents is something that is really strong even today. And why culture is important? Because landscapes uh, makes you know to the, uh, the, the audience is to remember you, but the culture can make them love you. And I, I, I like this quote a lot from Keith Dini, one of the book authors. Regarding experience, so why would Latvia be a good place to, to, to study, to work, uh, to be in, and to live? And, uh, and this is a, a very successful entrepreneur who now lives in the US and, and manages his operation from there. He, th he says, Latvia, there is a lot of space, and at the same time, everything is very close. So everybody was talking about this closeness, because the small country, of course, offers you this kind of easy to connect, easy to, uh, to walk around, so you don't often even need the transportation to, to, to meet everyone. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and also one theme that was going through every interview was that Latvia is really a great playground where you can play around, you can experiment, you can build ideas, test ideas before you go globally. Because it's affordable place, because you have all the talents around you, because the internet is fantastic, because uh, the, the, we, have, we are the first country in the world who have a startup law, uh, which, which, uh, which means the startups have almost no taxes when they start. So there's a lot of good things going on around, around it. Uh, regarding audience, it was very difficult because, I mean, uh, how do we define the audience geographically, business-wise? So I, I, I thought, let's, let's see what kind of mindset the, our audiences could have. And one of the mindsets is the people who are looking for peace, uh, for people who are stressed from these very crowded cities, crowded places they live currently or they do, do business currently. Or they want to have more freedom and more dynamics. And of course, Latvia is, according to designer who lives in Riga from uh, Berlin, he says there's a feeling that you can be whoever you want in Riga. It's still young and fresh and affordable. It's easier even than Berlin, where everything is already owned, established, designed by someone. I think he maybe slightly exaggerates. But anyway, I mean, uh, th there's a point. When it comes to trends, it was uh, also quite difficult to understand how do we, how everybody w will mention something else. So I designed 18 cards, having those, to my mind, most significant tensions, values, and mindsets that are playing a big role, crucial role in business, in, 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 in life, like mobility, connectivity, safety, greenness, health, collaboration, and so on. And those 18 cards, I, I played out each interview, so they had to choose three cards and rank them so that I get some at least some quantitative measures out of very qualitative research. So the first group I tested and the clear winner was connectivity because if the, in the world that there is six handshakes from you to Mr. Trump, let's say, in, in Latvia we, we have only, we, you need only two handshakes to prime minister or whoever you want to meet. So it's a really connected country, connected place and it works fast and flexibility is very highly ranked as well. So in the second group, the leader was greenness, even though the education and health was also uh, in, a, in a good, good, good shape. So the green, the very clean, unpolluted, um, uh, clean from traffic, a lot of uh, good things about quality of life in this sense. And in this mindset kind of character, characteristics, creativity, wonder ways, because we really have learned historically to you know to build something without having a lot of resource which always you know uh, opens up some some more creative juices so at the end if I have defined and of course it's my version of it, my version of narrative if I have defined those four areas so what is the purpose so it was not the easy one I was I think I didn't sleep for a couple of nights and was trying my best to you know to formulate it and I, I'm, I'm not sure it's ready yet but I want to share with you because I think we are one community and it's a safe place to be. So I think Latvia could provide a free space for ideas. And, and, and I, I will try to uh, uh, discuss what it means. So it's, it's really a free space to you know, experiment, to create something, to build something. And, and uh, what it means is not just that we are one of the most unpopulated countries and, people, and population is still decreasing. So we can, in a way, play around this defect into effect, that there is more space for everyone. We can enjoy. Uh, but also that the free means free from pollution. It's green, it's affordable. Space means that it's perfectly equipped space. And really, even a small village, you can operate from there to connect to any cities in the world. From Riga, you, we have 80, 80 different direct flights from Riga airport. So it's very connected to all the hottest uh, creative and business hubs. And ideas means that there's a lot of you know, experimentation, science, innovations, culture going on and possible with affordable 
place. This was a study done recently where Riga and London was compared, which kind of approves my, my uh, thought that there's environmental quality where we can win London today. So anyone from London, welcome. Uh, housing and cost of living. So there's a lot of space available in a, in a physical sense as well, affordable space. So and I think it, it could work well because it's pretty universal. If we turn it in different areas, there's a free, free space to escape for tourism, free space to create for startups, free space to invest for, to investors, free space to learn from students, and so on. So it's kind of playful in itself because if you think of Latvia as a playground and test ground, I think even our you know kind of messages could should shouldn't be very fixed. It should they should be live and, and playful as well. And of course, I asked uh, my friend designer just to to give you a bit of visual mood boards. And it's not a good idea because it's yet strategy, but still I, I couldn't resist. So he just, it, it, all pictures are from Latvia. So if, if whenever you would even uh, try to, you know, tell the story on Latvia and use some of those images, and this is done by me from my window of, of, of my house. I don't know what was happening there, but I, I thought it's pretty cool uh, to have a free space for Ballet on the ice, I think there is something also important uh, for creative leaders because as you know, creativity, it really, very often it needs space. And that's, I, I think I read a lot of LinkedIn articles currently about of, open office being kind of a, a wrong place to, to kind of to create because there is a noise and there is everybody, there is a market going on and you can't concentrate. Yeah? So I think, f for, especially for creative industry, the space is important, but not just for that and the space and time, because you can also, if you can do something fast, I mean, you can do much more, and you can be more happy about doing this just than just writing, than file opens, and so on. So, and of course, I also think that we should create an open platform, because, I mean, Latvia Institute, there is, they, they, they never have enough resources to market the country, but we have so many talents. I mean, we have amazing storytellers, photographers, you know, product developers, and they are, their, their chances to participate in country marketing is very limited today. So I thought, what if we follow Linda's Hill advice and many other advices that the creative leaders, they should create a platform, an open platform where people who have the talent, who have the ideas can participate, collaborate, and, and, uh, and, and engage with their ideas, with their innovations. So what if we, Latvia, instead of you know, complaining that we have enough, enough resources to market ourselves, what if we, we just open up and create this open platform for everyone, free space for everyone, when you can share your uh, recent uh, arts project or, or story or video film that you did, which could be a great way to promote Latvia at the same time. So uh, the implications, so despite, so one thing I, I, th I think you can take from this maybe pretty egoistic research is that I think it is possible for every country to design one umbrella narrative. It is possible. Even, even if people say, no, it's not, because businesses, they have their agenda, and startups, they have their agenda culture. They have. I think there is, there's always a, a one umbrella value or purpose that you can find. So next steps, I want to meet Latvian Institute, share the results. I'm not sure how, how optimistic they will be. I want to present my research in different conferences. Uh, two of them are coming up on, on September. And I maybe, if they are not supportive enough, maybe with, my, with, with some of my uh, friends and, and, and uh, also the, the ones who are actively uh, agreeing that Latvia needs some, some, some um, uh, open platform marketing, we can start ourselves the free space for ideas movement and develop the platform. And some other ideas. Uh, so, of course, I could do more interviews and I could test some of those hypotheses, which I didn't, uh, because I thought one year is enough and, and let's put a, 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 a dot here. And of course, it's not the end. Uh, of course, it's just a, a, a work in progress. But I think a pretty thorough one, a proper one. And of course, there are different areas we could research even further, uh, including the one find effect, finding effective ways of boosting the confidence. Because I think often companies are losing or bankrupting or, or sport teams are not winning because they don't have enough confidence. And this might be one of the very critical aspects which have to be researched even more. How do we boost the confidence in our teams, in our, in our organizations, in the academy, in the school, and so on. So. I'm optimist this November when we actually have this the exact date when we celebrate 100 years anniversary, our centenary. I hope 
we have a clear brand purpose agreed and we start a new life in terms of country branding. So thanks a lot for your attention. I think it's a good space for questions right now. Thank you.